goals. Collingwood Rovers capitalising on it. Wayne Richardson comes out, gets it to Tubman. Tubman back to Richardson. Beautiful football, great understanding. Down towards a mighty Peter McCann. It's <laughs> only about 30 yards out directly in front. And there is. Of the day. As he comes in now, it's a nice kick, just makes a distance, but it's right through for full point. But Rose up towards Tuddenham, swings round, looks for McKenna, McKenna in front position wall, too far behind, and McKenna takes the mark in the forward pocket. The angle's acute, the distance from goal, 45 to 50 yards. Yeah, Walls uh, fell for the trap there of anticipating a big kick. He should understand and realise that uh, they'll be looking for McKenna because McKenna is a pretty good goal getter. There's a kick by him too. It's coming in nicely. A good shot by McKenna, bringing up his second goal of the match. This one will go right out of the ground if I know McKenna. Oh, he only stabbed at it. Ten and a half forward. A hand pass to Richardson. Richardson looking for McKenna and finding him. And 99 for the season. Peter McKenna chasing 100 as he comes in now. And that's it. That's 99 on the board as McKenna puts through his fourth for the day. Two bounce to put him in trouble. He gets the kick now up towards uh, McKenna, McKenna and Tara, he took the mark, well played, Merrigan was trying to hold him out, McKenna I think has got too much strength for Merrigan, he's 100 for the season, from 45 yards out, he shoots with a drop punt, it's online, it's through and here they come, here they come, the kids are coming on the ground now, McKenna has kicked his 100th goal. We anticipated this, we saw this happen last year. Knocked down towards him now. Couldn't trap it cleanly at the first try. Taken out of the pack by Dunn. Somehow threads his way out of trouble and boots the ball into attack to the forward line. And McKenna is there to take the mark a long way from home. McKenna is about 75 yards from the sticks. Doesn't know what to do. Now he's made up his mind. He's got to play on. Kicks with a left boot. That was done in a hurry too. Not with good judgment for Wayne Richardson. Forty hand pass over to Tom Britt. But in the meantime, Morris has felled Wayne Richardson as if with a pole axe. And the Collingwood captain, out of that with a corky, is to get the free kick. And that's the best panacea there is. 5-7 to 4-1. Richmond leading by two goals, 13 minutes into the second term, and a chance to be only one goal down if Richardson can get his kicking boot in order. Well, there's no doubt that Wayne Richardson never puts on an act. And he's really hurt by that tough bump of Morris's and Morris, a newcomer to the Richmond side. Over at the stage, uh, Richardson coming off the ground, right in front of our commentary position. Wayne Richardson, that's bad luck for Collingwood, and coming on is Henry Coles. Yes, that's cruel luck. Their best player has done, puts him into attack, and McKenna's a long way out, picks it up, and he can have a shot. He tries to do too much. He does it well. Well done, Peter McKenna. A left foot kick is down towards the pocket. Two to one against Rick. Rex Hunt was the man who left the highest. Down it goes to Shooty, having a feast of kicks there in the back pocket. Down it goes wide, an opportunity for Lee Adamson. Adamson will get a short one across towards Greening. Greening centre wing looks there and kicks a right footer for McKenna. Great kick, Greening. And McKenna takes them up. He's coming down oh. real too much. Though, a long way. Too far down. There may even have been more Duns waiting in the forward pocket. But McKenna looks for a short one. He's going to try this run again. He's done it. He's in trouble. Kicks. Beautiful. Boynich down, out wide, looking for Royce Hart. A great mark taken by Robert D. The Collingwood Winster took a big one that time. He's almost on half-back flank. Collingwood, no method in attack. McKenna will take this one. Nobody went with him at all. A misunderstanding between the target defence and McKenna now at centre-half forward. He's done in the full forward zone, even though Leach is his opponent. Kevin Sheedy. Roaring as they find the Magpies coming back. Indecisive football in the centre till Thompson gets it out to Tottenham. Dunn plays on. McKenna, this one. 20 yards out and straight in front, McKenna. Intelligent football by Dunn to wheel round and play on quickly when he saw McKenna with Olford standing at least 15 yards in front of him. Straight kick here and the difference will be three points. 
McKenna. It's on its way. It's a dinky one. Goal three. Come on, boys, says McKenna. Three opponents. Back through the pack. Bartlett coming towards it again. Rose and Wearmouth. This is Wearmouth for Collingwood. Open spaces in front of him, and he goes for Dunn. Dunn ducks his head, gets the mark, and steadies down. And his opponent, Rex Hunt, is now limping as Dunn goes up. McKenna dropped the easy one. Comes back. Has a bounce. In trouble. Shrugs off the tackle. Sheedy bumps. McKenna still. Burke. Around the neck. Three to McKenna. Around the neck. And he's groggy. Not surprising. <laughs> oh, that was a tough tackle. McKenna, I thought, Doug, nevertheless, tried to do just a little bit too much. Uh, however, it was a courageous effort, and uh, let's see if the Magpies can capitalise on this uh, forward move. If they can kick it down, they'll hit the front. McKenna, difficult angle, but the drop punt specialist. Look at the way he lines it up. Three steps and bang. Conning would have hit the front. Man took Collingwood into top spot on the ladder. Thompson was again the best big man around and won his fourth Copeland Trophy. McKenna would fall short of his century, finishing with 88 goals. Well, scores a level. No, a level at half time and plays underway again. Martello the thump. Here comes Wayne Richardson in trouble. Boots towards the half forward line for the Collingwood side. Out comes Dews. Over the back it goes. Here comes the chance for Collingwood. Barry Price. Beautiful pass to McKenna. A gem. Barry Price has played a magnificent game this afternoon. It's been the Barry Price of old, Farrell, hasn't it? That it certainly has. Dashes, tremendous pace and the disposal has been absolute perfection. He has not made a mistake. Clearly best player on the ground. McKenna lines up. Bangs for goal and he's put it through. The wins out through the aid of uh, Leon Rice, who shepherded well for him. Towards the half forward line it goes. Collingwood players galore. Georgie Bishop, the hero of the Collingwood fans, streams downfield. Kick goes towards full forward. Over the back, McKenna. McKenna's mark. Peter McKenna from 35 metres out, directly in front. Collingwood's lead is five points at the 17 and a half minute mark of this final quarter. McKenna has three, and a goal. a goal here would be invaluable. Would be vital, Peter. Vital is the word. Let's watch it. Drop punt by McKenna. The goal umpire doesn't move much. It's there. Fourth goal to Peter McKenna. That's about to take place at the eight and a half minute mark of the third quarter, where Thompson and Jones once again clash at the centre bounce, taken away by Barry Price. Price going forward. The long kicks over the head of McKenna. Can he get back to it? Yes, McKenna. This is his first kick. He's taking this kick eight minutes and 40 seconds into the third quarter and, and Collingwood are down by six points. If McKenna kicks accurately, the scores will be level once again. It's Peter McKenna coming in. He's it's swinging back now from the boot of Peter McKenna. Scores a tie nine minutes into the third quarter. McKenna having his first kick and naturally enough, that's his first goal. Carlton still in. Dean brushed aside by the strength of the Carlton defence. It's Atkinson now trying to pick up. He gets it out. Hand pass to the forward pocket toward McKenna. McKenna with the ball in front of him. Tried to hook it around toward goal. That's all they get up. McKenna can't mark. Let's be him out with the ball in front of him. Can't take it. Picked up by McKenna in all sorts of bother. He's out on the left foot. He hooks a goal. It's Ellis. It's off now. McKenna has kicked his second goal of the match. He's only had two kicks, but he's kicked two goals. Great start for the final turn by the Melbourne. Oborn looking for a free kick which wasn't there. We are now from the forward pocket, picks up. A short pass to McKenna, and McKenna has marked in the forward pocket. Oh, just the bad 10 metres, that one. But McKenna in the forward pocket, right on the boundary line. Only five at six metres in from the boundary on the half forward flank for Collywood. A chance as Oborn picks up, a blind kick to drive uh, Collywood forward. Bissett competes but can't take the mark. South becomes on the scene. Uh, Jenkins came in there to try and check that his teammate through. Wasn't successful. We see uh, McKenna fighting for the ball here. He's desperately trying. Was held. Didn't take it. Here's Weir now. Going into an open goal. A hand pass into the goal square. And the goal! Goodbye, and the goal by Hurd. And Collywood. 
got 12 points up at the 16 minute mark of the final quarter. This is the big replay coming to you through the cameras of Channel 7 and your commentators, Jack Edwards and Frank Adams. Well, certainly a valuable goal by Bob Hearn. Good play there by Ronnie Wearmouth. Looked for a while like he might have blazed away at goal, but he saw Hurd and slammed the big hand pass right into the centre of the square, and Hurd put, as Jack told you, Collingwood, two goals ahead. I might pay tribute at this stage, too, to the fine play of Rodney Oborn in the last quarter, since being shifted to the centre, he's continually driven Collingwood into attack. But it's